Sheen Show. Yeah, boy. What's going on, guys? Thanks for stopping by. Today, we're checking out some footage from a recent Outward stream Nine Dots hosted on Twitch. The creative director and CEO hopped on Definitive Edition and played for about three hours. We got to see new mini-bosses, environmental changes, and even some buffs to certain armors. This is the first hands-on look we have gotten about the new content coming to Outward, and it is just as exciting as we had hoped it would be. Is there something you need? Okay, I gotta show you something else that I think people will be really happy about. Do we need to have both DLCs to win a different edition or just the three brothers? Okay, so that was not 100% clear for me at, at the start, and so I've been mostly telling people just buy the DLC, but I think you only need three brothers. So some things that were mentioned during the stream are pricing and a tentative release date. The game is going to be free for those who already own the entirety of Outward's content. For everyone else, the game will be $40. It is believed that the Three Brothers DLC is the add-on required for this update. However, not much was said on this, so we will have to wait a bit longer to find out exactly how the purchase will work. I would get both DLCs just to be safe. What we do have is a release month. No date in particular yet, but Definitive Edition will be coming out sometime in May this year. So we are not quite as far away from this new content as we originally thought. The sooner the better in my book. This guy is new. This guy is dangerous, and he's protecting that shield. Careful. Next up we have bosses. Now most of the significant caves in Outward will be getting a new enemy or type of mini boss. This is going to be a mob from that area that has been buffed up and given some sort of ability unique to it. We get to see a mana trog that is much larger than the typical trog and can buff other trog weapons with the ethereal imbue. This means that trogs near this new boss will deal much more damage to you making them more difficult to deal with. I'm not close to my trap. Oh well, oh well. Oh! I forgot to remove my backpack. I'm really too much into my Elden Ring habits. That's not good. Ah, uh, well. Okay. So, look at his life bar. Oh, I got hit. See, if I had a, sh a shield, I would have been able to hit him and block, and instead, I took two hits like a noob. Okay, okay, that's not good. We also get to see footage of a Tonosaur under the Conflux Mountain. This guy was pretty difficult for some adventurers before, but now, he's blue. He seems much more difficult to deal with, and possibly has more health as well. He also gets a sort of cold breath explosion compared to the fire breath he currently has. For those of you who love the fire sigil, this guy will not be a problem for you. A great addition to the game since this enemy was kind of already unique seeing as he's the only Tonosaur in chair some ease. Ow. Ow. Oh he is tough. I mean, he did not lose a lot of health. I'm gonna die. Hey, <laughs> I'm in danger. Nope, bye. I was dead either way. The last boss or mini boss we see footage of is a golem. He is located inside the ghost pass and can poison you. Now, if you don't know, golems don't really poison you. They're robots that deal more physical damage than anything else. Not this guy though. He has a unique greenish glow and will make it much harder for you to grab the ornate chest in that location. A cool thing about this enemy is that he is one of three golems in the room. The other two are deactivated and locked up on the wall. This one, however, seems to have survived the war with the Scourge and morphed into a decayed golem of death. Oh, he's got a lot of health. Oh, his stability is lower than a normal golem. Gotcha. I think I can deal with him 
just because I got the spiritual varnish, which is the weakness of all knowledge, by the way. Ow! And my weakness is getting hit. Oh, I might, I might, yeah, I'm in pain and not beating, that's fine. Hi, Blue Mage. I got him. You saw that? I got him. You got right on time. The boss-like enemies added into Definitive Edition seem like they will be protecting certain items or chests for the most part. Locations you used to run by and loot without any conflict will now get you killed if you enter them unprepared. This change does make Howard a bit more challenging but in a good way. Better gear and chests should be harder to get and require you to use more items such as traps and bombs. Hopefully, this will make the less significant areas of the game more worth checking out just to see if you are up to the challenge. In my last video, I mentioned that health bars will now flash if you hit an enemy with an attack they are strong or weak against. I had thought that red meant bad and yellow meant good. I was wrong. Hitting an enemy with an attack they are weak to will cause their health bar to flash red. Hitting them with something they are strong against will cause their health bar to flash yellow. For example, hitting a ghost with an ethereal imbue on your weapon will flash the health bar red, meaning you will do much more damage to them if you use that against them. On the other hand, hitting a ghost with just regular physical attacks will flash the bar yellow, meaning they are strong against physical damage. This will make it easier to find enemy weaknesses and keep you from whacking enemies with damage that hardly does anything at all. Now let's talk buffs and nerfs. The Master of Motion skill is a passive in the Warrior Monk skill tree that increases your defenses while the Discipline Boon is active. We do not get to see this in the stream, but it is mentioned that this got nerfed a bit due to how high you could get your defenses. On the other hand, Things like the Scholar Armor set just got a huge buff. This is a mage set that can be bought by merchants almost immediately after starting the game. It is great for decreasing the cost of magic skills, but now the helmet or circlet comes with negative 10 cooldown. This increases how fast your skills come back and can make you much more powerful. This is a pretty large buff considering the armor set is a very early game set and can be enchanted to do even more. Other changes we get to see are elementals in other regions, items and materials from DLCs being sold and found in other regions, and potions such as the Hex Cleaner curing new diseases like the Hunch Disease. Lots of quality of life changes that will make Outward even more replayable than it already is. We did get to see the new crafting tab as well. Potions learned can always be seen in your inventory rather than having to get out an alchemy kit. Now, one thing that was highlighted in this stream was that certain enemies in the game are going to be much harder to defeat than they were before. Things like rock mantises and shell horrors have been given a bit more defense in the form of protection. These are enemies that are meant to be somewhat of a challenge and are currently not that difficult to defeat. The pacing in Outward is going to be much more realistic. Larger monsters that should pose a serious threat will be dangerous, and your common adventurer will need to learn more skills before taking them on. In other words, the way you played Outward before will no longer work, and you will need to adapt to new strategies in order to avoid certain doom. So very, very different encounter now. I'm gonna be very careful, I'm just gonna poke him now and then. I should listen to myself and do what I say I'm gonna do. So I'm not even sure that he's gonna die on time. Because because I'm not used to the game anymore. And so yeah, people will have a, an even steeper curve when it comes to managing their encounters now. Because of that change. But I think it's a good thing. The last topic we will talk about is Vendiful Fortress. There have been quite a few changes to the prison area and defeat scenarios. For one thing, the silver exploit is no longer a viable option. The pickaxes that were lying around for you to decraft are now sold from the merchant there, and only one is left for you to mine with. Additionally, you only get two silver per iron scrap compared to the five you get at the current moment. This change is being made because you were never really meant to come here and earn a ton of silver. 
This transaction is meant to be part of the mini quest of you escaping the prison by working in the mine so someone will eventually sneak you out. The story behind your actions now has more meaning and will force you to work off your mistakes rather than just shrugging them off. We also get to see that gaining access to our confiscated items has changed a bit. You will now turn every single guard against you if you open the loud squeaky gate that bars your way. Very cool change that will be frustrating, yet fun to experience as we all eventually die in this fortress. If you are unsure about whether Definitive Edition will be for you or not, well, think no more. This recent stream has given us a glimpse of the amazing features we will be getting, whether it be in the form of new character customization, added on quest options, and even additional defeat scenarios. Definitive Edition has it all. Oh yeah, and you heard me right. We no longer have a seam on the neck of our characters, and now beards are customizable options as well. How can you not be excited for this to release? This is not good, is it? This place is so much worse. Yes, it is. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys got to understand more about what we are getting in Definitive Edition from this video. And consider subscribing if you are pumped for the new content. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.